All right, it's Jonathan with Pedals and Effects, back with Bob Bruno. Um, he brought his bass, this amazing Ibanez. I've never seen the like. Thing's amazing. I love that bass. How many were made? I read somewhere, I don't know if it's true, someone said 170, but awesome. I don't see them, so maybe they're right. I've never seen it. Have you ever seen no, it? No. Yeah. no. <laughs> the inlays are what make it. Um, so yeah, he brought his bass and his bass pedal board, yep. and, um, and this amazing Korg, Korg, uh, what is it? A PME 40X. PME. Right. From the the uh, glory days of the uh, multi effects unit, <laughs> yes, the plastic multi effects unit. What is this? This is like uh, where, when did they make these? Nineties? No, this is or eighties. Eighties. I have some musician magazines that had like print ads for it. Really? Yeah. So I think it was towards the end of the eighties. They had some good ideas. Yeah, Korg did A ahead of their time on some of this stuff. Um, let's see. What do you what do you got here? You got the octave, the octave ten. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's cool. Uh, it's the only thing, especially back then, that had a slider not only for the different octave intervals, but there's a dedicated distortion for each slider too. So you could have, say, like clean for your normal bass sound, and then a distorted octave up. Or okay. distorted down. Let's make that. Let's make that happen right now. So noisy as Very hell, noisy. Yeah, yeah. but amazing yeah. In, a, in a lot of ways, too. Yeah. That Isn't it oct it's called the octave five? What, or is it, I thought that was a V for the five. Yeah, I, I guess it's octave five. Oh, yeah. I said is octave it, ten. It, That'd be an five X. five octaves? <laughs> well, yeah, it, well, it has five options. Oh, okay. It has an, two octaves down and then one and a half octaves down, which is a weird thing. It gives you that fifth thing, I guess. Then an octave, one octave down, normal, and one octave up. Got it. Got with it. distortion options for every one of them. <laughs> and then right next to that was the wave shape? Yep. Wave shaper. What the fuck does a wave shaper do? It's a fuzz with a couple different waveform options. So it was like triangle, is it sawtooth, and a square wave, I believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that thing is. That thing's great. Like I have one, but I don't have that model. <laughs>
you have that's the one I when I look they're always like 250 350 for the yeah one. that's probably the rarest one it's between this one and distortion wah uh, although wave sh wave shaper is the hardest to find yeah oh, I gotta get that one I gotta get the octave one too though. <laughs> and then the digital delay is just a good digital delay, but it has a sample it has a hold function a hold, yeah, right, right so you can do like <laughs> Yeah, with the distortion slider, yeah, it's pretty gnarly. I mostly, there's four types of filters. I usually leave it on band pass plus. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> right. Uh, I don't even know now. I'm like, I'm not even sure which one I would actually go for. for I mean, definitely the wave shaper, but I think I get the distortion wall then because those combos that you had going were fucking rad. Yeah, I mean, this thing sounds great, uh, especially if you have a fuzz or distortion before and after. It's just like pure insanity. Like, uh, there's one track I did in one band where. Uh, I might have run the whole mix through that combo, <laughs> and it's just like I've never gotten to get like achieve that level of insane noise. Right, like that was the pinnacle. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Korg and yeah, yeah. plastic '80s boxes. So you were you got this pedal board, and again, like is, this is for bass, right? This yeah, is, yeah. Okay. I only use this for bass. Um, and uh, yeah, the first thing is uh, this Vox trike which uh, don't see anybody else <laughs> using it. Not but, yet. But it's awesome. It's, uh, so you have, you can do octave up, octave down, or both, and it's a fuzz pedal. So uh, for the record, I was uh, doubling a lot of the bass stuff with uh, a Moog, and uh, this kind of achieved that uh, for me, so. to that you get the Mellotron electric harmonics right yeah so and, uh, and what was the sound that you were getting on it that one is uh, just like a string sound um, with uh, some delay and reverb and it's just uh, playing stuff like <laughs> Stonehenge. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then the other sound that you got was the C9 one, right? Yeah, and this is like an organ with chorus, verb, and then some flange and delay. And, uh, Yeah. 
Hey. And, you know, the thing I love about that sound is that it doesn't, I don't hear organ. I mean, I, you could if you listen for it, but you're not thinking, oh, shit, he's got the organ pedal on. You yeah, know what I mean? right. And that, that's what I love about how you used it. Thanks. Yeah, the song that I'm that I'm trying to, you know, fill in for it is really super minimal. And it was just like two bear. And so on the record there's like roads and uh some synthesizer. So I just tried to find something that kind of got the vibe of both of those things without playing specifically either of those things. And so then you also got the uh the new chorus by Boss. Do you like it? Yeah, I love it. I was using, and on the record I used, uh, actually, is the Dimension D, right? The the pedal version, uh, but I got nervous just taking it out of the house because <laughs> they're harder to find now. Yeah. Yeah, but this thing sounds great. Uh, using this to kind of get that sound. What eight string? The Hagstrom, the newer one. Oh shit. Yeah, uh, which is cool. They're like under 400 bucks and yeah. does the job, you know. Cool. Uh, so we're going for like a Cure vibe sort of, so. And when you play bass, are you typically affected? Like, or do, does is this just for certain songs? Uh. It's probably 80% of the time I'm using at really? least one pedal. Yeah. Cool. Even, you know, a lot of times it's just fuzz, but especially for like the quieter, like more tripped out numbers, there's usually some kind of effects happening. Cool. And then um, I see you got a fork going. Yeah. That is uh, just like, because this is so much, this guy. So if I want more mellow, it's just kind of... So when I don't, you know, not quite clean, but not all the way driven. Right, right. This is good. Right. Uh, How did you get that beer on the beginning? Was that the other pedal? The, the yeah, the, the electric mistress that's in here. Ah. With, uh, Yeah, this flange is really good on here, um, especially with the bass. Um, what what is that? That's just a that's a multi the uh, electron monks multi pedal, right? Yeah, so it has the pog, the electric mistress, and a holy grail. That's handy. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want anything bigger than this, so that was the way to get all those things in one. Okay, and everybody wants to know what's up with that little white one. This is just like a clean boost. Kind of clean, it's a little dirty. Um, but I was playing this bass a lot, and then I switched. Now I'm playing a uh, Music Master, which right. is a lot quieter than this. So this kind of compensates, especially on clean stuff. But lately I've just been leaving it on all the time. And. Uh, it's good, especially with the EQ, if the rig needs a little more bass from the instrument without fucking with the amp. It's good. That's fucking crazy. It, I mean, and so how did you find out about it? Uh, because I think all of us see those pedals, but we're like, huh, okay. I, <laughs> I, uh, I, I found out about it just, I wanted, um, I didn't have enough money for like an RC booster or something. So I saw this and it was like 80 bucks. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'll try that. And then I got it and I was like, oh, it's actually awesome. And I ended up buying two of them. Um, and I was using it in Best Coast for a long time on my board. Um, and now it's, I've been using it with bass. Um, but yeah, the thing I was saying earlier is uh, if you watch the ACDC rig rundown, that's the only pedal in the rig is this white, more wow. pure boost. 
I can't believe that. So it's, insane. It's the greatest thing. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, I think we got your whole bar being hyper fuzz. We well, there's that. The delay is cool. Oh, oh right, yeah, the this whole delay. I love it. I own like three of these. Um, it's good for anything. And those those knobs on the top, right? Those are like it has filters? modulation. Oh, okay. So if you want, you can have like. <laughs> that's, that's the, the base analog sound. See, I always like analog for bass more than I do digital. I mean, I, you know, you, digital, of course, is, is fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, I don't know. There's something because it just colors your bass and then you, you it's like it makes you play differently. Yeah. You know? just, I feel like, I don't know, this is probably just me, but I feel like I lose low end sometimes if I'm using a digital right. uh, delay. And uh, I think the dirtiness of the analog, yeah, it just it just keeps the, the big sound of the bass in your tone. And sometimes you just want an additional thing to happen when you hit a pedal, and if it's just a delay, I mean that's cool. But like, yeah, like you know, that's why like a lot of the digital delay, delay pedals that I like have filters in them, you know, so you can do the tape saturation or whatever. But that's why I mean I still go to analog delays if I'm picking one for a pedal board, pretty much. Yep. So. Unless, unless it does something specific that you can't do with any analog delay. Right, right. You know, but yeah.